Hey everybody, welcome to this Cubase for Beginners tutorial. I am John Merritt from Born to Produce and you are going to learn Cubase and music production by following along and making a complete track from start to finish. Now don't worry if this isn't the exact genre that you want to produce, I guarantee that this is still the best way to learn Cubase and you'll be able to take the skills that you learn here and apply them to any genre that you like. Here is a clip of the track that you're going to make and then we're going to get right into it. Oh. Oh. Alright, this is the Steinberg hub that you see when you load up Cubase. On the left is news from Steinberg, like when a new update is available, and on the right we can load projects. In this case we're going to create an empty project and it's going to ask you where you want to save that project. I'm going to save mine on the desktop. We can see that's where I've got my tutorial zip that I've downloaded, but I'm going to create a new folder and call it John's Beginner Project. Hit enter, make sure that is the folder that's selected and then go select folder. All right, so this is our new Cubase project. Very quickly before we get going, I just want to check our settings are the same. So we're going to go to project, project setup, and then just make sure your sample rate is set to 44.1 kilohertz and your bit depth is set to 16 bits. Okay, and that's fine. Click OK. All right, so back in our projects, this is the main project window and where you spend most of your time in Cubase. This area in the middle is where we arrange all of the parts or elements of our projects into a song. There are four zones around the outside of the project window and you can show or hide all of these zones by clicking these buttons up here. So at the moment we're only interested in the right hand zone so make sure that's showing and then you want to go to the media tab and this is where we find like audio samples and other content to add to our projects. So if you bought the tutorial, you will find the audio samples that you need in the work files folder of the download. If you haven't bought the course, there is a link to the free work files in the video description on YouTube. So download and uncompress them onto your computer. Now how to get to those audio samples in Cubase is again, we are in the media tab in the right hand zone. We're going to go to file browser and then you need to navigate to wherever the work files are on your computer. Again, I put mine on the desktop. So I've got the tutorial download folder, which is the Cubase 14 beginner tutorial. So if I expand that, go to work files and then audio, I can see all of the audio files that are in that folder. Now there might be just a few of you out there who can't see any audio files in that lower section. If that is the case for you, just move your cursor up until you get that double arrow with the two lines and just click it and move it and you should see all of the audio files appear. Now we can audition each of these samples simply by clicking them as you can hear. We can stop a sample if you want to, there's little controls for it there. You can also adjust the volume of the playback sample if it's too loud or quiet. Uh, now if the samples aren't playing automatically you want to click on this button which is play the sample automatically or auto play. So with that being said, let's get in our first sample. Now the first sample I normally use in a project is the kick as it serves as the foundation of our track and it gives us a beat to work to. So you can actually just click and drag a sample into the project window and it will create a new audio track. However, for drum sounds, I recommend loading them into a sampler track. So we're going to go through this in very simple, repeatable steps, but very quickly, let's just go up to this box up here, which probably says bar and change that to adapt to zoom. It just means that the grid will adapt depending on how far in or out we're zoomed in. All right, let's get this sample in. So we go to the kick sample. I'm going to right click it and go create sampler track. And you can see we've got this first track that's appeared in our projects window and this has appeared in the lower zone. First thing I'll do is actually just change the color of the kick. So with the kick track selected, I'm gonna go up to the color palette tool and just select like a light orange color. I suggest you use the same colors as I do just so it's easier to follow along in your own project as we progress through the course. So this showing in the lower zone is what we call the sampler. And if I click on that blue key there, you'll hear the kick being played. Now you can play 
other notes, but C3, the blue key, represents the natural pitch of the sample. Okay, so that's the one that we use. So that's all great and all, but how do we actually get the kick to play in our project? First off, we need to draw in a blank MIDI segment. And to do that, we need to select our draw tool. So you can either come up to the toolbar and select the draw tool. You can right click and select the draw tool, or which is the easiest and quickest way is to hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and it changes to the draw tool. Okay, so with the draw tool selected, I'm just gonna go to bar five and click and drag one bar. So between five and six, which is one bar equal to four beats. And then we have a blank MIDI segment. Now let's zoom in a bit. So there are various ways to zoom in. We'll cover sort of more ways as we go through the tutorial. But for now, if you just move your cursor up to the timeline and sort of click where you want to zoom in and then pull down, that's how you zoom in or out, or it's one of the ways to zoom in and out. And we can see as we zoom further in, we get more and more grid lines. That's the adapt to zoom function working. So if we wanted to change the size of this MIDI block, we could grab the lower corners of it and then we can move it or drag it across. We don't need to for this one. We're going to keep it the same size. But just so you know, if you have drawn it incorrectly, then you can just simply adjust the ends. Okay, so step three in getting our kick into the project is we need to draw in some notes. So for this, we're going to double click on that blank MIDI segment. And you can see in the lower zone, we now have this, which is the basically the same keyboard as what we saw on the sampler track. And if you remember, C3 is the natural pitch, which is the same for all samples. So this is where we draw in the notes that represent our audio sample, in this case, the kick. So bear in mind, we have a one bar segment and each bar has four beats in it. So it will go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. And you can see the thicker grid lines represent each beat. Now, before we draw in our notes, in this MIDI editor in the lower zone, we want to make sure that the snap type is set to grid and that we're on 1 16th of a bar. Okay, so just click on that and then select 1 16th. And then to draw in, it's exactly the same as when we drew in the blank MIDI segment. So we can either select the draw tool or we can hold Alt on our keyboard and then draw in our notes. So these notes are half a beat long. Again, if you draw it incorrectly, you can simply click and drag the beginning or end of the MIDI note to resize it. Now at the moment, the kick is quite loud. It's sort of like at maximum volume. And that's not ideal because as we add more and more elements to our projects, all that sort of collective volume is gonna increase and we'll end up with the whole thing sounding really mushy and messy. So what we have to do is something called gain staging and the sort of cheat easy way to do that is to basically turn down the first element of our track and then any other elements that we bring into our track we use our first element as like the baseline and we turn down the volume of everything else to match the kick in this instance so to turn down an element in the project there are quite a few different ways to do this but the easiest is to make sure that the far left hand zone is showing so this one right here there is another left hand zone but we'll get to that later so in the far left hand zone we then have this volume fader. Now, if this is a bit small, you can actually drag this sort of dividing line to make it bigger or smaller. So just bring that up if it's a bit small on your screen. And then we are simply going to grab the volume control and drag that down until this reads about minus seven. Doesn't have to be exact. Anywhere around minus seven is fine. All right, so let's play what we got. Now to play in Cubase, first of all, you set where you want the playhead. So you do that by clicking in the timeline and you've got that like four pronged arrow and then you can hit the space bar on your keyboard or you can or you can go to the transport panel and hit play okay so there's our kick it's okay at the moment but it's obviously not looping and we want to just concentrate on this one bar at the moment so in order to loop in cubase we come to the timeline we go up to that lighter gray section at the top and you'll see the draw tool appear and then you just click and drag over the region that you want to loop now at the moment, the loop is grayed out, which means it's not active. So to activate it, come down and click the activate cycle button. And you'll see it turn purple. And then when you play, it just loops around in that section. All right, so I know that seemed like a lot just to get one sample in, but I promise the more we do this, the 
easier it becomes. Now let's do it with the clap. So we're gonna go back to our right hand zone in the media tab in our work files. I'm gonna scroll up to the top and we've got our clap here. So step one again, we're gonna right click and create sampler track. I'll just change the color of this. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that this track the clap is selected, go up to the color palette tool and we're gonna select yellow for this. And then we're gonna draw in a blank MIDI segment. So again, grab your draw tool, however you wanna do it. I hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and then click and drag. Then step three, double click it to go into the MIDI editor. On C3, we have the clap. Now the clap pretty much in most dance music, especially house music, the clap always falls on the second and fourth beat. So let's get our draw tool and draw in a clap on the second and fourth beat. Now, as mentioned, we wanna turn all the new elements that we add to our project down to match the volume of the kick. So let's just have this play for a second and then we're gonna bring down our volume controls to sort of balance out the levels. So they sound reasonably the same. So somewhere around minus 13 for now is fine. We're obviously going to be volume balancing this as we progress through the track. So as you can see, it gets a lot quicker to add a sample into your project when you know what the steps are. So let's do that again. And we're going to do it with the closed hat this time. So again, go to our right hand zone, right click on the closed hat, create sampler track, draw in our blank MIDI segment. Okay, then we go into our blank MIDI segment now in house music, there can be various different hat patterns, but by far the most common hat pattern is just to have a hat on every offbeat of the bar. Okay, so in this case, we're going to draw on, on C3 again. And we wanna turn that down, because it's quite loud. And then let's just play it. Okay, already we have a basic house beat. Now, again, I'm just gonna change the color of this. So with the closed hat track selected, go to the color palette and we're gonna use yellow. So all of the main sort of drum sounds will be yellow, but the kick is slightly different. So we'll just have that uh, light orange color, not super important, but it will help us navigate our projects later on when we got everything color coded correctly. Okay, that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, Jay is gonna teach you a really easy way to write chord progressions in Cubase without the need for any music theory knowledge whatsoever. Here is a quick clip of the track to remind ourselves of what we're aiming for. Catch you in a bit. Till the end of